Hey, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Moldyworm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldyworm41975, and today we are taking our first electric car down the rally course. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rally Series everybody, I hope you are all having a great day and today we are taking our very first electric car down the rally course, the Porsche Taycan Turbo S. Now I am not a huge electric car fan but I am curious to see what kind of lap time we could actually put down in the Porsche here. Now, I have a good strong feeling it can put down a decent lap time, whether it will be our reigning champion the Lamborghini I am not sure but I feel like I am going to be pleasantly surprised with the Porsche now the only downside with the Porsche is it is a sort of sporty saloon car so even if we put springs and dampers on it it's going to have the same problem as the Bentley Continental where it will bottom out and uh, it's going to be quite uncontrollable in the bumps I think but before we get into the customization I want to say if you guys are following the channel and you enjoy what you see, then maybe you'd like to actually participate in some of my videos. If that is the case, then make sure you go check out my private Discord channel down below. It's created by my good friend Rin, so thank you to her for helping me create it and set it up. It is called Club 75, and it is all about racing and car games online. Now, I have been looking for some people to play some team adventures with, and if you think that is you, then make sure you go and join the Discord server down below. You don't have to do anything except join up. And uh, you can also find other people to play with on there. Uh, we have games like Gran Turismo, we've got Farming Simulator, SnowRunner, Forza Motorsport, and Horizon. We've also got GTA 5. So I make content on all of those games. If you want to be in some of my videos, make sure you go and join the Discord. It is completely free. But let's get into customizing the Porsche here. It starts off in S1 class, so there is not going to be a lot of room for upgrades here. Now, as far as batteries go, we can go ahead and put in the race motor and battery parts, which bumps this thing up by 30, uh, uh, bumps it up by 30 PI. Uh, now, it start, starts off at 700 horsepower. It is all-wheel drive. Um, but we can take the thing up to 970 horsepower. Now, considering this thing is already all-wheel drive, it is already um, quite powerful and we are off-road, I'm not going to go for the engine upgrade. I'm just going to try and give this thing as much grip as possible. I'm not going to go for a splitter because that's going to lower the car. Now, the spoiler, as ugly as that spoiler looks, I think it is going to help us, so I'm going to put the spoiler on. Now, all the vehicles in this series are going to be fitted with the Rally Tire Compound, unless they only have the option of the Off-Road Race Tire Compound. So there we go. We're going to go for full um, track width on the tires as well. All the vehicles we have run so far have kept their standard wheels, so we will keep the standard wheels. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw in the Rally Diff as well. And then, as far as brake customization goes, um, we can go ahead and put this thing on rally springs and dampers. It's going to lift the car a little bit, but still going to be quite low compared to some of the other vehicles we've run. And we're going to go for as much weight reduction as the vehicle allows. Now, after it's all said and done, the vehicle comes in at 752 horsepower. 770 foot pounds of torque and 400 pounds so this thing is just under two tons which is not too shabby actually it's kind of to be expected with the size of the car and the fact that those uh, batteries weigh so much but it is all wheel drive it is electric so that means no changing gears and i think it could put on a good show so i'm going to go ahead and tune and paint the vehicle and i will meet you guys at the rally course Alright then, here we go for our first run in the Porsche Taycan Turbo S. 
of course the thing is fully electric so not going to be a lot of sound to comment uh, commentate on now the thing actually does have two different gears it has first gear and second gear and that is it so if I get the gearing a little bit wrong, I do apologise. I have never really driven an electric car in real life or in uh, Forza games, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. We only just hit that uh, uh, flag there. Now, it is a little bit weird, actually, because I'm having to keep an eye on the RPM. I'm not sure if that's actually what you would call it. Now, the only nice thing with the electric is you get maximum torque right from the bottom, which means when you're coming into some of these corners, the Porsche pulls you out the corner very, very nicely. And I have to say, as quiet as this thing is, it is putting on an impressive show so far. A little bit bumpy through there, but it actually doesn't soak them up too badly. Now, coming into the hairpin, I don't know whether we want first or second through here. I'm just going to keep it in second, I think, for most of the run. All right, coming down the long straight into the two right-handers here. I was actually focusing a little bit on the RPM there, so I missed that corner a little bit. But we get through there okay. We've got two more runs to improve on this one. I'm just trying to see whether we actually hit the rev limiter at any point. Uh, if we don't, then I know we can just leave the vehicle in second. And I can actually focus on the run in our next two attempts. Now coming up to this corner, how does the Porsche deal with that? Actually very, very smooth through there. Alright, let's see what we can do in these next couple of corners here. It's actually going to be quite a contender, this vehicle. We're up to the two minute mark, so coming down the hill I predict a 2.10 second time. Um, which leaves us quite a lot of room for improvement. I have been uh, quite slow in places. There we go, across the line, a 2.11 second, 0.431, but a lot of room for improvement there. I was running wide in a lot of places. We didn't actually hit the, uh, we didn't actually hit the rev limit in any places, so I think we can just uh, set off in first, leave the thing in second, and uh, hopefully we're going to have ourselves a new champion here. Okay, attempt number two in the Porsche Taycan Turbo S. Let's see what we can do this thing. I'm not going to change up as early off the get-go. Uh, on the previous run, I changed up to second. A lot of the vehicles hit the rev limiter straight out the gate, so it was kind of a natural instinct. But I'm going to keep the Taycan in second gear for the entire run now. Uh, it seemed to be quite happy there. It has the low down grunt to get away with leaving it in second gear. Uh, obviously being electric. And um, it doesn't hit the rev limiter. So we can just leave the thing in second now. And I can actually focus on the run. A little bit of a bobble over that jump there. But nothing too terrible. Now the sport suspension actually on the Turbo S here is going to help us quite nicely um, it does keep the vehicle planted down to the ground and then we have the off-road springs and dampers just for a little bit of travel when we go on some of the uh, uh, off some of the jump sorry possibly could have break through that corner there now coming up to the hairpin I am going to leave it in second for this corner there is possibility to change down to first but uh, it seems to get us out the corner okay so I don't really see any need to it's a very, very weird learning curve with this car. Because there's no sound, it's a little bit difficult to know what you can and can't get away with. But the uh, Turbo S actually putting on a solid performance here. I wasn't expecting a whole lot from the vehicle. Obviously, it is a sports car, so it is never going to be a slow vehicle. Um, but the uh, all-wheel drive is helping this thing magnificently. Although we have run a little bit wide on that corner. We could have been possibly cleaner through there. We're up to 2 minutes 50. This is similar lines to what we saw in the Bronco from the last episode. Although this thing seems to have a little bit more traction than the Bronco. That thing had a lot of horsepower. It was spinning its tyres quite a lot. I'm wondering if the Porsche with that second battery engine could have been a little bit faster. But we crossed the line at a respectable 210.597. That is already going to put the uh, 
Porsche just behind the Subaru WRX STI. But I think there is room for improvement. I think we could possibly even beat the Bentley's time of 209, which would then put the uh, Porsche here in fifth place, just behind the Bronco from the last episode. But they're all just words. Let's see what we can actually do in our final run. All right, our final run in the Porsche. I am actually going to change down to first gear for the hairpin because I feel like that might just pick up a couple of... Uh, tenths of a second there which might help us um, just overcome some of the lag um, I'm actually going to change down to first for this corner as well it's just going to give us a little bit more grunt coming out the corner and then back up to second gear through the water splashes the vehicle is quite heavy just under two tons so it gets through the water splashes relatively nicely although it is quite a low speed sprung sports car so um it doesn't get through as cleanly as some of the big off-road vehicles but there we go let's see what the porsche does on this corner most of the cars drift that corner the porsche is planted i have to say if nothing else the porsche is very very sticky it grips the uh the ground very very well um possibly it could have been slower through that corner once again now coming into the hairpin, I'm going to break early and change down into first. It is a little bit of a slide from the Porsche there, but in first gear we get out that corner a little bit faster. We're doing 125 down the straight there, similar to what we saw in the Bronco in the last episode. Now let's see what kind of speed we actually get up the hill here. Uh, we're going to crest the hill at 122 miles an hour that is actually the fastest we've seen up the hill there so uh, the turbo s is actually not hanging about now coming up to this corner i've kind of worked out how to run this corner you got to go out wide on the entrance turn in very early and then shallow on the exit and you can actually get through that corner with quite a lot of speed and momentum now, the last couple of corners here, we're up to the two minute mark just there. This thing is actually putting on an impressive show. What can we do down the hill? Sadly, not quite going to beat the Lamborghini's time, but we crossed the line at a 2.08.729 uh, That is actually going to beat the Bentley Continental Super Sport from a couple of episodes ago. Uh, just behind the Bronco from the last episode um, with a uh, 207 but let's actually go and have a look at the leaderboard and see how this thing racks up well there we have it let's actually have a look at the leaderboard there we go fifth place for the Porsche Taycan Turbo S I wasn't really sure what the uh, the Porsche was going to do. It's kind of a middle ground vehicle, but it wasn't that much uh, slower than the Bronco from the last episode, which I said did a very, very respectable time. I think the Porsche Taycan, as much as I dislike the vehicle, um, it actually put on a very, very good show. It was not as uncontrollable as I predicted it might be. And it's actually put on an impressive show. A fifth place for the Taycan. If you just look at the leaderboard there, it is faster than the Bentley Continental by a whole second. But it is actually faster than the WRX STI and the Audi Quattro Sport, which are both world-renowned rally cars. So if that doesn't tell you anything, then the Taycan has beaten two world-renowned rally cars. That means the Taycan is a fast vehicle off-road. It can definitely hang with the likes of the Focus RS and the Bronco from the last episode. I'm impressed with the Taycan. I'm not going to be buying one anytime soon. I'm not converting to electric cars, but I have found a new level of respect for this thing. And it actually doesn't look terrible in this Martini Racing livery. That's going to do it for this episode though. Hopefully in the next one we might have another electric car. I'll have to see what electric cars we actually have in the game because I'm not 100%. Uh, let me know if you did enjoy the Porsche's run and you want to see more electric cars. I will definitely um, do some more of those for you. But that's going to do it for today's episode. Thanks all so much for watching. Hope you did enjoy and I will see you in the next video.